How many of you know how to code? Uh, well, that doesn't look that good, does it? It's just a very small number of people, but guess what? The situation of this room is still much better than of our planet. Um, we have 7 billion people in the world, of which only 18 and a half million can code. That's about 0.3% of our world population, and about one in every 378 people. That is a very small fraction of the amount of people we have in the world. But the important question is, why is that a problem? Well, the answer to this question is, is pretty simple. It's because we depend on computer software for almost everything we do. Computer technology is one of the only fields that I know of that connects every profession, regardless of what you become in life. Today, computer software is there in almost anything you can name. It has revolutionized agriculture to education, to medical science, to everything that you can name. So as time goes on, we, we become more and more dependent on technology. So if we don't have enough software developers, we're essentially slowing down the progress that we make as, as a race. So I have taught programming to almost 100 people by now, advised more than two to 300 on how they can learn coding. I've started initiatives called ITTW conferences, National Olympiad in Software Innovation, and I'm also a part of several other communities like PHP Experts, Bangladesh Internet Professionals Community, Innovation Extreme, etc. My aim through all of these things is to promote one simple thing, that is software innovation. Now the question is, what is software innovation? There are two parts to it. Um, one is writing computer code to build software. The other, more difficult one, is to innovate and find solutions to our problems. So software innovation as a whole is building new software that can solve our problems. I started programming when I was 10 years old. Um, I'm sure all of you here, probably all of you here, are over 10 years old. So if you are, um, then you should easily be able to learn programming now. Because if I could do it then, you can definitely do it now. So what I did as a programmer was I solved my own problems. In grade six, I built an information management system for my dad's business. So that helped him maintain his contacts and information in one software package. That was a solution to his problem. So technology was helping him to do something. In grade 11, just last year, I made a note-taking application called Vonote that let me take notes in the Cornell note-taking format online and store them basically over the cloud. So that means I could access them from anywhere in the world, and I could use any sort of device, be it my phone, my computer, my tablet, anything to access my notes. That was a solution to my problem as well. And it not only helped me, but it also helped my friends and students in my school. So I think that's what technology is about. I mean, it's about helping people. It's not about being the next Mark Zuckerberg or being the next billionaire. It's about building things that solve our problems, and that takes us forward. I've worked on many other applications, and currently I'm working on a project called Incognito. We're making an anonymous social networking app that lets people share things without giving off their identity with their friends and family. This, too, is a solution to our problems, because it gives young people a platform to share their opinions and um, ideas in without giving off their identity. So my message to all of you here today is that software innovation is not just for computer science students and graduates. It's for everyone in this room right now. From my experience in teaching computer programming, I've learned that coding is not rocket science. It's easy, doable, and anyone can do it. If you Google how to learn coding, you're going to find 100 tutorials, if not 1,000. And you'll, find, you'll, you'll be able to learn it easily using interactive um, lessons available online. Um, now I'm going to refer back to a talk given by Raj Islam. He said that to innovate, you don't need in-depth knowledge about any particular discipline. You don't have to be the best programmer, or the best engineer, or the best lawyer, or the best doctor in the world to innovate. You need to know a little bit about a lot of different things, so that you can find connections between those disciplines and create something new out of it. So innovating is, is essentially finding intersections between existing disciplines. For example, Steve Jobs found the intersection between music and technology that eventually led to the birth of the iPod. Now, we know that the iPod revolutionized both technology and the music industries as a whole. And obviously, Steve Jobs was not the best musician in the world. He was not the best engineer in the world. But his knowledge about both tech and music allowed him to find the connection. And that built something new that we all, almost every one of us used. So that is innovation. And he also mentioned that um, innovation can be taught to a six-year-old. Anyone can learn innovation. As long as you know something about a lot of different things, you can innovate. 
So if both coding and innovating are, are doable by everyone in this room, why is it that we have so less software innovators? Why don't we have enough software innovators? I don't know the answer to that question, but I can assure you of something. You can be a better software innovator than all of the ones you know already, and you can build things far better than I can, even though I am a programmer. I'll explain why with an example. So um, say you're a doctor, and I'm an engineer. I'm a computer programmer, right? And we both decide to build something for other doctors, right? So when I build it, um, I have to go out and somehow interview doctors, find out information, know something about medical science to actually build the software. But for you, you have to just learn programming. Like I said before, learning programming isn't a big deal, especially when you know exactly what you're making. You can Google up, you can find hundreds of tutorials, you can find lots of open source scripts and build it. But for me to gain all the knowledge about medical science and about doctors, it's going to take a long, long time. In fact, I might not ever be able to do it. So obviously, when making a medical software, it's easier for you to make it than it is for me, even though I've been programming for eight years now. This applies to all professions. So if everyone in this room can code, you can revolutionize your own industries, your own domain of expertise. That means when you build something, you will be revolutionizing it for your people, and you will do it better than any other software engineer can. So if all of us learn coding, we can change the way we do every little thing, and we can change the world. So that is why coding is important. So when you build something, you're, you're essentially changing it not for yourself only, but for everyone. And that's why I said solve your own problems. Because if you, you, you can solve your own problem, you'll be solving that problem for other people as well. And that is the best thing about computer software. Now, the only last thing that I'll say is that it's not just about you and your problems. It's also about our country, and it's also about the world. Bangladesh needs more software innovators. The Bangladesh Association of Software and Information Services aimed for a target of $1 billion in software export revenue over the next five years. And you can contribute to that, because it obviously won't be possible without the citizens of Bangladesh, right? So that's one thing. At the same time, as software is expanding across all domains, we need more and more people actually building software for different domains. It's not possible for just computer science graduates to make software. In fact, if you look around you, if you look into Bangladesh and see different, meet different people who are making software and who are innovating using technology, not all of them, in fact, not most of them, are computer science graduates or students. And there's a very big misconception. And the, the misconception is that you need, to be able to be, you need to be really good at math or really good at English or something like that to code. It's wrong. You don't have to be the best in anything to code. Because coding, due to the availability of resources, is, is extremely easy to learn. And I think that is what makes coding so amazing. So the last thing that I'm going to tell all of you is think about what you can do. Build things that is going to solve our problems. Because if you learn to code, you can change the world. And the world needs you. Thank you.